time now to turn our attention to the international newspapers. Laurent Berchtecker joins us for that. Uh, Laurent, you've been scouring them for us. But let's start with the, that story that's been dubbed uh, Luanda Leaks. It's hundreds of thousands of files that have been published that claim to show just how Africa's richest woman siphoned off state funds into offshore accounts. Well, that's right. The leaks were published yesterday by the International a Consortium of Investigative Journalists, and they're looking at the inner workings of the fortune of Isabel dos Santos. Now, The Guardian reveals how the daughter of former Angolese president Eduardo dos Santos, nicknamed Princess of Angola, uh, used her status and her connections to build this $2 billion fortune in uh, one of the world's poorest countries. Uh, the story has received much coverage, including in the New York Times, uh, which shows a picture of Dos Santos in Cannes uh, partying with Paris Hilton and Chris Tucker. And while this article focuses on the role of U.S. firms in uh, helping her uh, build and uh, park that fortune abroad, including uh, renowned firms like the Boston Consulting Group and PwC, uh, French newspaper Le Monde is also talking about this story extensively uh, and giving uh, details on how she acquired stakes in Angola's diamond, petroleum and banking sectors uh, using her status as the president's daughter. The article points out that these revelations come uh, amid a corruption crackdown in Angola uh, with Isabel dos Santos's assets uh, having actually been frozen last month uh, by a local court. Uh, meanwhile, Dos Santos has reacted and uh, claimed her innocence, denouncing a politically motivated witch hunt against her. OK, well, let's head to the United States there. And the New York Times has announced which Democratic candidate it's going to endorse for the upcoming presidential elections. Well, it's a, it's a New York Times tradition. Every election, they pick a candidate to endorse. And uh, this time, the paper announces a break in convention as it chose to endorse two candidates for the first time. Uh, the two women vying for the Democratic nomination, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar. Now, the newspaper says that while uh, the, this Democratic contest is often portrayed as a tussle between moderates and progressives, uh, the times have changed and the events of the past few years, uh, meaning the Trump presidency, have cast uh, things in a new light and led to a change in perspective. According to the article, both the radical and the realist models on the left warrant serious consideration and it picked Warren and Klobuchar the, to best represent each approach. Uh, also, it also had a word on Bernie Sanders, who was considered uh, for, to represent the uh, progressives, but uh, was, consi was considered too rigid and unwilling to compromise. Mm, interesting. How significant, though, do you think an endorsement like that is? Is it getting much traction even on the other papers? Well, according to the Huffington Post, uh, it's actually a cop-out, this decision to endorse two candidates, as uh, uh, it's a per perplexing endorsement, according to the author, who says the two senators are running on such significantly different different platforms that this doesn't really mean much. Uh, but it's definitely, according to the Huffington Post, a boost for the two uh, senators just two weeks before key Iowa caucuses. Uh, it's worth noting that historically, over the past 30 years, all the Democratic candidates that were endorsed by The New York Times went on to win the nomination. Oh, OK, interesting. Um, well, back from the US now to the UK and that story that uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are uh, leaving or stepping back, still making a lot of headlines. Well, it's been an endless source of headlines for British uh, tabloids. And again, after Prince Harry gave his first uh, speech explaining his decision to step back from the royal duties, we see the Daily Express uh, showing an emotional, uh, devastated Harry, uh, explaining why he had to go, why he had no other options. And the story is also uh, doing the rounds uh, we'll, we'll see in the Daily Mirror. Uh, again, Harry and Meghan uh, with the paper warning of a billion dollar battle for the couple, which won't be able to use the, the Sussex royal uh, brand anymore and could struggle to maintain their way of life. Now, this entire fascination, even obsession with the royals, is being analyzed uh, by The Guardian in a very interesting article, uh, saying that the press is demonizing the royals. And while the author here notes that all uh, the three major newspaper groups most obsessed with Harry and Meghan are all being sued by the couple for, for breaches of privacy and copyright, uh, including Harry claiming he was hacked by uh, The Sun and The Mirror, According to the article, this points to a, a glaring conflict of interest, and there's probably a lot of uh, worried newspaper editors that have zero interest in treating the couple fairly or kindly. 
We see uh, an example maybe of this in the Daily Mail, which also headlines on the couple, uh, calling them the Duke and Duchess of Netflix after reports that uh, the streaming platform approached Harry and Meghan about possibly starring in uh, the future season of The Crown. Hmm, yeah, one to watch. Well, but you have another article about Netflix alone, the company looking to make new inroads into the French market. That's right. Quartz calls it a charm offensive, as Netflix has long been seen in France uh, and by French authorities as a threat to the country's uh, cultural sovereignty, uh, and I quote. Uh, but it's now announced a series of partnerships and projects, including some with uh, to help disadvantaged communities get into filmmaking, as well as some 20 French shows and movies that are currently in the works. Uh, we can even see on this picture uh, that uh, Netflix invited the Paris mayor, Anne Hidalgo, and the culture minister Franck Christer to the unveiling of its new Paris office and uh, well clearly they're not so threatening anymore as Rister said uh, that despite getting off to a rough start Netflix and France have now realized that they cannot live without each other. Hmm, okay Laurent thanks a lot for that look at the international Thank you. papers.